Manindha, good to see you. Uh, the grand old or the grand young man of Tripura, uh, chief minister for 20 years. Uh, but you're not contesting this time. Yes. So that has, is that your decision or is that the party's decision? Honest answer. Surely, we are always honest. Uh, there is nothing to be concealed. Mm -hmm. We must be truthful also. Mm -hmm. So I drew the attention of our Politburo. Uh, and they uh, inquired uh, the reasons behind my decisions or feeling. So I have made all these points clear. New generation, uh, they are growing, they are growing. And uh, new group of leaders, uh, they should also be groomed. So that's why we shall have to spare space, provide space for them. So keeping all these things in my mind, I thought that this time I should not contest. All the more, our present secretary, after demise of uh, Gautam Das uh, during COVID period, so he has been made the secretary of our state committee. Jitain Choudhury. Jitain Choudhury. He belongs to a tribal community. So we have decided that he should be fielded as our candidate. So, so have you retired from politics in a way, from electoral politics? Does this mean that I should... Uh, have you retired from electoral politics? How it can be? Electoral politics, there is no contradiction with our overall political activities. So no, but you are not contesting. Will you, not have you decided never to contest no, elections no, again? No, no, no. no. That is never, never in no, politics. No, 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 no. That is never, that is, that is, that is uh, not the idea and decision. This time I am not contesting. It will depend uh, in, uh, subsequently. Uh, As to what happens. Uh, but, you know, I have always been fascinated. You were chief minister for 20 years. And then when someone saw your assets in 2018, you had 2,420 rupees in your bank account and I think 1,200 rupees in cash in your wallet. After 20 years of being in politics, you had 2,400 rupees in your bank account. What did your wife say? <laughs> she does not say anything against it because I am actually eating in her hotel that is being <laughs> maintained and controlled by her. So <laughs> she was the home. She was the one running the house. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And you would give all your money, your salary, also, I believe, to the party. Your monthly salary went to the party. Uh, that is our practice, according to our constitutional provision. Communist Party members, of course, Communist Party of India, Marxist, if they are elected and if they get some money from the government, so that ha that is to be treated as the uh, money of the government, and that has to be deposited to the party. Party then decides. Accordingly, what I am getting, I am giving it to party. Like my other comrades are also doing the same thing. Don't think that I am alone is doing. No, and I have also, I, we've also heard of left leaders over the years who have, you know, made a reasonably decent lifestyle and moved far away from what the original objectives are. You are a rarity, sir, in politics. For someone to be 20 years a chief minister and have only 2,400 rupees... Is that something that you believe has all, you know, it's not something, does it come naturally to you that you never hankered for, you know, using power and position to make wealth, right? Never, actually, it was not in my mind. All of a sudden, they filled it me in an assembly by election, then started the journey. So you are basically a, you are basically a party worker all your life. It can be said, it can be said. You know, the BJP says, uh, Manikda, that your 20 years, uh, Tripura was kept poor. There was a lot of political violence. Your political opponents were murdered in some case, cases, political workers from other parties, especially the Congress at that time. How do you respond to that? That Manik Sarkar was personally an honest man, but the party system was not so honest. That is actually not correct because they are failing to counter Communist Party of India Marxist and the left as well as the left-led government. The, these sort of uh, uh, concocted stories… Uh, so they were political murders. You can't deny that. Yes, I am saying. So you see, extremist onslaught at that point of time gone to such a… Hi. The other parts of India cannot actually 
thought of that at that point of time. So those who are completely actually in the hands of the extremists, the, in their hands more than 350 of our comrades, both tribal and non-tribal, including one of our ministers, were killed. So I am telling you... Because the BJP, sir, today says they have brought peace to Tripura. They says they, are, they have brought peace to Tripura and they are slowly bringing prosperity and development which was missing in your years. What else they can say that they shall have to say like this, all these are actually false. I am telling this, those who are complaining all these things, I would request them, they should talk to their Prime Minister. Prime Minister, after becoming Prime Minister, he visited Tripura. We invited him. We invited him to meet our cabinet. Not like him alone. Earlier also Dr. Manmohan Singh was also invited by us. He also met us. He thought that uh, first time perhaps you are going to uh, meet the uh, Prime Minister in a cabinet meeting. Then I made the point clear, no. <coughs> you are the second Prime Minister. He then wanted to know from us in the cabinet meeting that how you have been able to counter this extremist onslaught and brought back peace in Tripura. Then we have explained all these things in front of my other colleagues. Then he requested me, would you please kindly send a written note to me within next seven to ten days. Uh, then I asked him, what do you do with this? No, 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 this will be very, very helpful for me. And uh, in other parts of our country, uh, learning from Tripura's experience, uh, we may use this. Then within seven days, I sent it to him. And he uh, acknowledged that, yes, I have received your note. So. So you, you are taking credit in a way for taking on the militant extremist forces. You believe that it wasn't after 2018 that peace has come to Tripura. You are claiming that even during your chief minister That's tenure, the, you had already, peace had already begun to return. Correct, correct, correct. That is the thing. That is what they, the present leadership of BJP here, they are trying to conceal all these things, conceal the truth. How is it that the BJP, which was only a party of 1 or 2% in 2013, becomes a party of 44% five years later is now in power? How come the left has lost out in Tripura? Will Tripura also now go to the Bengal way where you will keep declining and the BJP now is the, is the new force here in Tripura? Here you see, in the, in the, in the last assembly election, 2018 election, actually... 2013 assembly election, Congress, INPT, they got more than 41 percent vote. Mm. And BJP got 5 point something. You are right, what you have yeah. said. But 2018, after uh, results are uh, published, uh, it was found that Congress vote share has gone down less than 2 percent. BJP's vote share gone up uh, 50 point something. But we have not got this boot. So where this boot has gone? So at that point of time, to oust uh, CPIM or left from government, uh, non-left, non-BJP forces, they uh, uh, united themselves. So, so this basically is, the Congress this voter, the Congress voter went to the BJP to defeat the left. Correct. Right? Correct. So the Congress voter went to the BJP to defeat the left in 2018. And today... Uh, Manikda, you have tied up with the same Congress correct, to correct. defeat the BJP. Correct, correct. So what kind of politics is this? This is a new alliance you are forming with the very party you fought for so many years. Now you and the Congress have come together. Anybody can ask this question. To them, it is surprising. Actually, BJP has forced the people of Tripura to be united to oust them from the seat of power. Why? Fascistic attack is going on. Constitution of India does not work here. Voting right of the electorate, uh, franchise, that they are not exercising freely, fearlessly. These because are the very words they use against the CPM. They say when you were in power, there was a, a gunda gardi, there was, uh, there was a rule, authoritarian rule. They use these very words that you are using today against the BJP, against the left. I would, I would tell you, at that point of time, after 18 assembly election was over, and counting of votes, there was a gap of about 20 or 25 days. At that point of time, like you today, number of national uh, 
press uh, representatives, they visited Tripura. After the election was over, they met each and one of the leaders of different political parties, including BJP leader. They asked, uh, the, uh, are you satisfied? Was there any problem? Every political party leader passed their comment, very peaceful election. We have no complaint. Uh, people have exercised their franchise fearlessly, freely. So if that was not happened, how BGP would come to the government? So now what they're saying, just to save their uh, back, because right from three-tier panchayat election to parliament election, practically no election, no election, and even in the last uh, four by-election held for, uh, for assembly seats, including Agartala. At Agartala, the present chief minister, he got elected. But to help him to be elected, boys have been collected from different parts of the state. And even Agartala people, they are beaten like anything. So how they so are... you are saying the BJP cannot claim that... Uh, only the left parties are the ones responsible for political violence. But I want to ask you just a couple of more questions. One is this alliance, I repeat. Is it not an unholy alliance, you and the Congress? No. Parties that have fought each other for so long? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have been fighting. It is correct. So is this an unholy opportunistic alliance? This is not alliance at all. This is actually, you see, six or seven months back, we issued one statement appealing the people of our state, those who are really claiming that they are democratic and secular minded. Mm -hmm. So, Tripura, democracy is under attack, democratic rights are snatched away, political rights have been snatched away, people cannot exercise their franchise freely and fearlessly, constitution does not work, one party dictatorial laws is being imposed, and the minorities, they are under mental pressure. So in this situation, we are appealing to the people that please come together to isolate this government and mobilize and rouse the people against this onslaught. At that point of time, Congress responded in a positive manner. Then unitedly one statement was issued. And from then on, gradually, gradually, uh, we have been trying uh, to stand against Congress on BJP's onslaught. Then election comes. Then from the leadership of the Congress, they approached us. That uh, then we have started discussion. Okay. Between, you know the other question, of course. No, is no, the, is, no, is no, the no. question of statehood. Is the question of statehood? No, you I have to clear this yeah, question. You have yeah, raised. Go ahead, go ahead, yeah, go so ahead. in this situation, we have decided in 13 seats they will contest. In 47 seats we will contest. So this is just seat adjustment. Why? Their motto is to isolate and defeat BJP. Our motto is to isolate and defeat BJP. So in, on that count, we are fighting at this moment. This is the situation I am told. I am telling you, BJP onslaught. They have forced people of Tripura to mobilize uh, unitedly. And both Congress and left, uh, they also actually encourage them to come together. Okay. This is the credit goes uh, to the BJP. Exactly. Okay, but y'all have come together, but the X factor or the king maker possibly in Tripura this time could be the tribal parties, especially the Tipra Mota. They are coming together. They want separate statehood or certainly far greater autonomy. There was talk that you would try and tie up with them also. That has not worked out. Do you believe that at some stage or the other, the tribals must be allowed to have greater autonomy than even they have today. Maybe they should even look at separate statehood, yes or no? Greater autonomy, this is our demand also. You see, in Tripura, now, tribal areas autonomous district council is working under six schedule. Government of India did not agree at the initial stage. After a long struggle led by us, they agreed to have it on the seventh schedule. That was also during Desai's time, not Congress time. Then, for our government, then from the government, it was discussed, decided and approached the government of India. And in the assembly, unanimous resolution was passed that no, not on the basis of seven schedule, it should be on the six schedule basis. Otherwise, any time any state government can dislodge this ADC. But under six schedule, state government cannot do this. So in this situation, despite all these things, for last Several years, we have been asking mm -hmm. the government of India 
that to strengthen this autonomous district council, they should be given more autonomy, more power. On that count, we have been saying right from the beginning, it is not that they are saying first time. No, but my, my, my point and my question, uh, uh, Manikda, is this. Do you believe that at some stage to reach out to parties like Tipra, Mota, you will have to look at separate statehood or no? That's, that's not non-negotiable. Tripura cannot be broken down. It's not the question of reaching to Tripura, Mota or other uh, tribal outfit. This is our ideological political stand and you will find that the state must remain you, one you, you, but you give greater autonomy correct you you i would request you today our election manifesto has been released and in the tribal section you will find the first point is this for providing greater and higher autonomy highest autonomy we think that constitution should be amended and for that we shall continue our struggle okay so you are saying greater autonomy but short of statehood is what you are promising the tribal areas, yeah. right? What would you like to tell younger politicians mm -hmm. who enter politics sometimes and their assets multiply by several times when they are in politics? What will you tell the next generation whose assets only seem to multiply when they enter politics? They have large cars, they live lux luxurious lives. What will you tell them? You know, I would like to tell them I cannot advise them, I can request them. First of all, they should love the country like mothers. Loving country means loving the people of our country. And they shall have to work for their better future so that they can actually come out from the problems they have been facing, they are being faced. So to do this, to get it done, they shall have to be very, very honest, truthful, sincere. So they should not confine themselves uh, for their own interest. But they say that today you cannot l survive in politics without money. To fight elections you need money. To grow in politics you need money. You don't true. agree? No, don't you can survive in politics without money power. You see, I am telling you, I have already mentioned from 1979 I have been contesting an election. I have not spent a farthing. My party has taken responsibility. People have taken responsibility. Who says that without money you cannot... Uh, so the party has the money. You don't have the money, but the party means, has the money. Party means what? Our party, they have no mint. They are going to people collecting money. I am also collecting money from the people. While I become chief minister, I stopped collecting money from the common people. So I would say we are going house to house, door to door. How much did you spend on an election campaign? Of your own money, any of your own money? Not a single rupee. Not a single rupee? Not a single rupee. Chalo, you know, there are politicians and politicians, and then there is Manik Sarkar. That's why I thought we would do, we would get you on elections on my plate, because you are, in a sense, very unusual for today's politics. I am, I, I am telling you, uh, I found that one of my friends, he was telling that last time I had to spend money, I could not actually review all these things, so this time it would not be... Pro possible on my part. Then I got. Why did you spend your money? Where from you got all these things? He told me that he sold out his land. Then I explained him. Are you right? I have been contesting this election since 1979. I have not spent a rupee. Why you are spending your own money? Don't do this. This is wrong. This should not be done in future also. Okay. You've given us a lesson. So, on elections on my plate, since we are with... Uh, the one-time poorest chief minister of the country. Uh, we'll do the poor man's thing, sir. We'll have a cup of chai yes. and biscuit, yes. tea and biscuits. Yes. That's the best way. Uh, you're watching elections on my plate.